And as I mentioned, really a rough figure there when we talk of around $12 billion. But when you look at the plans, uh, really ambitious. We're looking at roads, rail, ports, airports, water and energy. We're looking at health and education. Uh, this is a very big uh, project, of course, that is going to be underway in Gabon. And surely it's going to come up far higher than that $12 billion that I was alluding to. Well, yes, I think ultimately um, uh, the cost is going to be very high, but uh, you have to start somewhere. Uh, and this is the, uh, you know, now that the, uh, the, the African Cup of Nations football tournament is almost finished, um, this country is now able to concentrate fully on the infrastructure development that it wants to do to improve the lives of the people. And the president's been very clear about his priorities, health, education, roads and housing. Um, and they have come out of the master plan uh, that we wrote uh, over the last 18 months. And, and this is the start of uh, what I hope will be many years of development. Mm. Uh, just looking at what kind of numbers we can expect going forward, you talk of many years of development. They're obviously very key priority areas. And it seems that education and health has now surpassed many other projects. Obviously, roads is also top of the agenda. Tell us about the priorities and some of the projects that you plan to instigate first. Well, uh, as with, with all infrastructure projects, some take longer to design than others and some are more advanced than others. Um, one of the key priorities early on, especially in and around Libreville, where um, half the population of this country lives uh, in, in Greater Libreville, is indeed housing. Um, and then allied to that, of course, is, is water and, and sewerage and, and electricity. And so those, those areas are probably um, are up there amongst the highest priorities. Um, and then ally to that the roads that are necessary to provide the communications to allow further and future business development. Uh, and they're very high up there as well. Um, and you're probably aware, I think, of the, of the big housing development to the north of the city, to the north of the airport, actually based around the Amitié Stadium where the, uh, the games in Libreville, the football games in Libreville are being played at the moment. Um, we're well advanced on the design and planning of that in conjunction uh, with uh, the Gabonese ministries that are involved. Uh, and we will expect to see uh, houses um, uh, coming up there and, and the necessary infrastructure uh, yeah. very quickly. Well, Jim, as we know that when it comes to infrastructure spend, it's a very big price tag, not only for government, because it actually comes from revenues from uh, the consumer. I'm sure you have to come up with many innovative ways to overcome uh, various problems. Tell us about some of the solutions that you've actually put on the, w the table to ensure that you are environmentally sensitive to various areas and uh, to come up with interesting and innovative ways uh, to ensure that the costs are kept low. Yeah, well, one, one of the big things in, in construction and engineering nowadays is, is what's called value engineering, how, how, to, how to engineer solutions for the best value. Um, I think one of the, uh, one of the reasons why uh, the president brought uh, Bechtel in um, two years ago, nearly two years ago, to assist in this infrastructure development in this country was that he was not content uh, with the way it had been going up until then. Um, some projects uh, had, had not finished, uh, certainly many had not finished on time and many finished over budget. Um, and so what we are helping to do is to provide some of the discipline and the organisation and uh, some of the, 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 the different standards of, of construction and engineering. Um, allied to, of course, very much in partnership with um, the, the expertise that exists in the ministries here uh, and has existed for many years in the ministries here, um, but just assisting uh, in, in order to, to, to produce this infrastructure uh, at better value, um, uh, at lower cost if we can, uh, and on time. Yeah, well, with regards to ensuring that there's also job creation and acquiring the right skills, uh, how are you overcoming this challenge and are you ensuring that there is going to be skills development within Gabon? Yes, I mean one of the uh, one of the um, elements of, of the contract that brought us here was that we are uh, we are mandated to provide um, development to uh, both Gabonese individuals and Gabonese companies. And whilst we still have on this project um, a, a high proportion of, of expat employees, um, we're also building up the numbers of Gabonese quickly. I mean we've got about in rough terms about 125 expats. 
uh, from Bechtel. Um, but within the ANGT, the, the government agency that we've set up uh, for coordinating these activities, and Bechtel itself, we've got between 50 and 60 uh, Gabonese employees. Um, and that excludes um, sort of domestic staff and drivers. We've got about another 50 or 60 of those. So uh, it's not as many as we would want. And over time, the plan is to replace expats uh, with Gabonese. And of course, that's just individuals in the, uh, in, in the, in the management and running of this. Uh, of course, the, the aim as well is to develop um, uh, the, the construction uh, companies in this country to, to, um, uh, to allow them to do more and better work uh, and perhaps to encourage the growth of new ones as well. Yeah. Uh, with regards to rolling out the various phases of the project, it seems that 2025 has been uh, tabled as uh, a very key year with regards to the completion of uh, the majority of the phases of the project. What kind of timelines have you put in place thus far? Well, 2025 was the, the, the end date given uh, for the master planners. Uh, you'll appreciate that you have to plan against um, a certain time scale and 15 years is, is, is about right. Uh, it doesn't mean that everything's finished then. Um, uh, of course, you know, as the planners always tell me, planning is a process, not an event. So uh, you adapt your plan to the circumstances as they change. Uh, and we will do that. That's the, the art of planning. Uh, we've already added things into the plan in the, in the 18 months that we've been developing it that have become a very high priority in this country that didn't immediately jump out to us from the master plan. Uh, and I think uh, uh, development of education and health facilities are two good examples there, um, which there has been an added, quite rightly, an added urgency uh, to make rapid early progress on uh, and then to develop um, uh, longer term. But it's all about setting priorities. Uh, you, nobody can do everything at once. You can't do everything at once because you don't have the, the capacity in the construction industry. Um, and of course, you can't do it all at once because you haven't got all the money at once. Uh, and so it's about setting priorities uh, and then working to a long-term plan. And the great thing is to integrate uh, these. There's, you know, there's no point in building a new town to the north of Leap in very simple and, and rather simplistic terms. No point in building a new town to the north of Leaperville if it doesn't have any water or roads. Yeah. Um, and so we in integrate the projects together into a package.